Hi, welcome to Bump Love. Joining us today is Annette Chirabira, a counseling psychologist and a mother to three boys. She's going to help us unpack the conversation, love, sex and relationship. Welcome yeah. to the show, Annette. Thank you so much, Rosette. So my first question to you is when do child, are children aware of this love and sex? Like which ages are they usually aware of the topic? Wow, the topic of love and sex is a very, <laughs> very sensitive topic. Yeah. And also, they are not exact ages, they are estimates, okay. uh, depending also on the child's exposure. But also just thinking about the word, when are they aware? What is, what is the extent of that awareness? Mm. Because usually as children, right from the womb, you, you're aware of love and affection. Yeah. So as a child, they come out, think about yeah. the love of a parent expressed yeah. through care and all that. Yeah. So that's the very first kind of love. Wow. The affection of mom, of dad, of voice, of feeding, cleaning them. So that kind of sets children up to begin to respond to the world. But of course the whole issue of sex and relationships, sometimes children as early as six might be aware and uh, listening to your earlier conversation, how most of you got aware by accident. M maybe they see something or they watch their cartoons these days. You know cartoons these days have lovey davies uh, mellow uh, feeling. And then the children, you, you see them glued and they're also going, hmm. Mm. So there's something <laughs> endearing yes. that they might feel. Exactly. But when we use the word aware, it, it's very uh, delicate. I think I should say from the word go that as adults, children and adults, the way we attach meaning to, to these things or to the words of love, sex and affection is very different. So the child at three who is responding to that cartoon or whatever yeah. Yeah. might not really be attaching the meaning us the as adults. Yes. yes, the way we know it. And, but usually what happens when you're a parent, you jump, yes. exactly. you panic, yes. panic buttons That's are pressed. Right. So off. when are they aware? They might see things that seem nice, they might hear. I like the fact that most of you mentioned the adults in the home who are doing something. It could be the, uh, the housemaid and something, somebody else. But some children have peeped at their parents. parents. Some parents mm. have kept their children way too long in their room. You know, we have different mm. living circumstances. Yeah. Where is Angie? Yes. This one was Angie, <laughs> remember? So, I was keeping so the baby. children see things, like all of us when we were young, there are things we saw and then attached meaning later. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, exactly. yeah. So, yeah. for most children, that happens. They see dad and mom seem like they're huggling in bed yeah. if they stay too long. <sighs> and, and so, that creates some level of awareness. awareness. What's that? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's that. So, yeah. it could be earlier than six. Yeah. Okay. But now we have TV, we have movies, they have exactly. phones, phones, internet, exactly. uh, the cartoons. The cartoons we watched when we were young, okay, most of you are way younger than me. I remember, some of you I'm going to mention cartoons you don't even know, the Alvin show. The Alvin show, you'll go and research on it. There was nothing. There was nothing about sex and whatever. But think about kids who've watched, like my children watched Lion King. Mm, and that, mm. there is an endearing yeah. story. Yeah. So from that moment, mm. how young are they? Well, very so young. they become aware, they, 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 they might see things. Of course, one of the most uh, fundamental relationship is dad and mom. Yeah. Then they might see other relatives. Then they might see the, the driver and the exactly. maid, the shamba boy and whatever. They can't quite, they've not developed abstract thinking. Yeah. They can't interpret stuff but they take in stuff. Yes. So they see, they hear. Very old movie, see no evil, hear no yes. evil. <laughs> but they see, they hear. Yeah. Most of you here are witnesses that you know things that your parents don't know you saw. Yeah, 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 my, so yeah my mom's going to be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> so that alerts us to how early. Of course, by age 12, sometimes they can tell gender differences. Yeah. Yes. Like you were talking about, the boy has a penis, I yeah. don't. Uh, they stand 
I see it on the potty. So oh, they yeah. will begin to identify those differences. Then they'll see mom has uh, the chest is protruding, yeah, dad is flat chested. So maybe from age three to five, they might start asking questions. Yeah. Questions that embarrass. I remember when we were growing up, <laughs> I don't want to embarrass anybody, but it's difficult to talk about these things and Without not share experiences. Yes. I think maybe it was our maid who would use her sanitary towel when my sisters were seeing. So one day, mom just sees one of them pulling toilet paper and trying to insert, like to using, to yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, somebody must have seen Since something. Yeah. yeah, and some parents I know, uh, they, are, they are naked in their rooms and the children are there, which I don't think is healthy, because also yeah. there are healthy ways of introducing your child to staff, and also yeah. there are unhealthy ways. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes yes. we flood them with too much exactly. exposure, yet their young brains are not yet ready, ready. to process. Yeah. And those are the things that can cause um, danger. danger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm. Maybe just to pick up from where you left off, the introduction to um, what is appropriate and at what point. So we have a general idea of at what point, you know, you can start to introduce and how. But also maybe just to um, caveat that question, does it vary, does it matter like with gender? So what I introduce to a girl, can I introduce to a boy at the same time? Does the information yeah. vary? Honestly? Yeah. Because I never got the benefit of oh, girl of and boy, boy yes. and mine were boys, <laughs> I introduced Ali. Ali, oh. So I don't even think it should be about boy or girl. Mm. As early as two, somebody mm. already said, once they have vocabulary, they have, um, sometimes they are touching. I like the fact that you already mentioned body parts. Yes. You're teaching them about their body parts. You're teaching them about acceptable and unacceptable touch. Yes. Yes. Because I'll tell you something, our bodies respond. You might think your child will be repulsed by the touch, they might enjoy the touch. Yes, Should true. they enjoy the touch, more than likely they might not come reporting. Yes. So if you're the kind of parent who is waiting, oh, if somebody touches them, they, they'll come reporting. They might enjoy, enjoy it. it. Begins with soap, the nanny is bathing yeah, the baby. Destroying me, right? And the conditioning, there's something we call conditioning. Yes. And the condition could happen as early as, as six months as yes, baby. Baby, baby, yes. Because if the true. person who is touching the child is, them is touching them in a early. Early, they are conditioning them to enjoy certain things. Now, yes. they've got nothing to do with sex, with relationship, with love. Yes. But they've been programmed. Yes. The primary sex organ is the brain. Yes. yes. It's not the private parts, yeah. the ears, the whatever. Yes. yes. It's the brain. And that's why most people, if you're not doing well mentally, uh, sexual urge and all those things fly. Yes. So your baby has a brain. And if somebody touches, they condition. Yes. And so the baby can start acting up. Yes. You, <laughs> you know, interestingly, we are speaking about these things. As parents, we always think it's the other person who might molest. That's very true. What if it's your child who, who does begins it, to who touch molest. another child? Such a scary thing. Yes. It's very scary. And why most of those children they are innocent. Yes. They they are not attaching evil yes. uh some Wrong of us have raised them in Christian homes, values. I, it's just that they were conditioned, they are touching another child and also conditioning them because the body enjoyed. Yes. Not because they are sexual. Yes. Th does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. So that's yeah. why we want to start as early and now they are bombarded. Yes. The yeah. whole watching and the the, the, the voice of, of uh, the tone of voice of the cartoons yes. uh, th that it's doing that can actually inform your child yes. that this seems to be an enjoyable exactly. exercise yes. interaction yes and they might copy that interaction and I'm glad you've talked about yeah. that because one of the things that you've talked about is kids do not process mm -mm. sex the way we Absolutely process it not. so it comes from a certain place of of innocence yeah. mm -hmm. But that, that the pleasure from certain things, it doesn't know innocence. No. It is pleasure. And as a person who works with children, I've had moms who come and say, okay, I don't get what's happening. My baby sucks her fingers as she touches herself. <laughs> my baby is touching my boobs as they, and they seem to enjoy it. I was, I, I, again, as a person who works with children, I have been, I have been exposed to children who masturbate as early as two years old so now we know that they they're not thinking of it negatively they're just they're the sex 
organ is a brain, they are innocent, but pleasure and they, conditioned. They, it's, it's conditioned. Mm -hmm. Now what do we do? What do we do? I, I'm still talking about, um, so, as early as possible, but also the other things that you mentioned, take what we call teachable moments. Teachable moments come in two ways. You can initiate, you can be intentional. Yeah. I like the story you shared about the 12 year old who got pregnant. We can use newspaper articles, what's on the news. There are so many things that present opportunities for us to have teachable moments mm. with our children. That's true. But most of the times, us as parents, we are super scared. Yeah. Now, yeah. one of the first person to manage is Me yourself. yourself. Manage your fears, manage your prejudices, manage your anxiety, manage the panic. Yeah. Because the moment, uh, I remember when we were raising our children with friends, I get this phone call in the evening, there was homework. And someone says, and he's asked me, what is sex? I said, first calm oh, down. Yeah. Where is it coming from? It was homework. It, the answer just needed male and female. <laughs> oh so I said, goodness. go back to the homework paper. Okay, no, yes. Oh so, the, 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 oh but the panic, God. and I'll tell you as... <laughs> those who are watching wow. us the rest of us as parents our biggest undoing is our shame yeah. we are shy then we trigger fear then we think the worst what will happen to my children all these things so if we are going to comfortably we need to rehearse yeah. in our bedrooms as parents you rehearse you prepare you say oh my god i'm finished but teachable <laughs> moment I'm going to do this. So that is you being proactive, yeah. like I had most of you. But there are also teachable moments of where their question pops. Yeah. One yeah. of the most profitable and the ones we miss the most are the children's questions. Oh. You're busy cooking and then the question pops and you're like, no, wait. Talk you about have just missed the teachable moment because you're preoccupied you're cooking you didn't think it was important yet it was oh, that's and nice, when nice they are so, yes and when they are very young the moment passes quickly yeah yeah they might come running and they might tell you my son I asked me I saw boobs. Uh -huh. and he said it differently from the way he usually says breasts he said mommy I saw boobs have you seen boob boobs so I get you when you say that they ask it just like uh, and then for you, because you are preoccupied with something else, you say, no, no, no. By the time you come back, boobs, they are thinking, what boobs? is she? What? Because they are not abstractly thinking. The moment has passed. And there are many moments we miss. Yeah. But I want to encourage you, pick them. Like boobs. If boobs is not the language you always use, use at home. Mm. Wow, interesting new word. Mm. Humor helps a lot. Yes, if I can helps. give yes. a tip. Mm. Humor. Now, you can't use humor when you fear things are still high. Yes. So the more you rehearse, the more you can use humor. You're like, boobs, yeah. okay, yeah. guys, we are talking boobs. Mm -hmm. Yes, mom, they are boobs. Yeah. From your original word. Yeah. Yeah. Now that conversation will lead you to where they got the yeah. boob story. Yeah. Um, and then you expand the learning. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Parenting just happens. Parenting is not rehearsed. Yeah. The moment happens and sometimes it passes. So I don't want parents to beat themselves up. Yeah. But just remember, use the teachable moments, yours intentionally. And then I'll say, so one of you mentioned when you're going to S1, use development stages. stages. Yes, use the biology. Prepare yourself as a parent. Diffuse things you know will come at 13. But also watch your child. Because of the abstract thinking and the comprehension, when you introduce something and you see no reaction, reaction Don't let it over. go. Mm. Age appropriate. Just yeah. know, oh, we are not yet there. Okay. But also read into, I'm hiding something. Yes. Mom, this conversation we are they not I having. I finished it. I hey. talked it with my friend. You are not the one. Mm. Mm. I finished it to uh -huh. mm. mm. I even saw it on TV. <laughs> in my friend's phone. Exactly. And you are not so giving So learn the blocking. Info. But as a parent, work your way around the barrier. Yeah. Because I liked what you said. As a parent, you work towards being the initial information. You want to be the one, somebody once termed it, who introduces appetites to your child, who touches your child's palate. It's a figure of speech. Yeah. Who introduces new stuff That's to your powerful. child. That's powerful. You want to be the one that guards the gates of your child. Yeah. Will we always be successful? No. no. But where you can... can. Because there is that uh, principle of first mention, mm. 
Mm. It will be the reference point. Mom is going to bring truth. I like the fact that please do not lie them that children smanya mangoes yes. and oranges. Truth that you will build on. Yeah. Age appropriate truth yeah. that you will build on. The babies they come from somewhere. <laughs> you you might not know that place, but there's an opening. Now I'll tell you something. Fast forward, I do premarital counseling. You will not believe that there are adult men who don't know that a woman has three openings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even they there kind are some of think women the who urinary don't know. tract is where the menstrual flow. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Do, yes. Yes. Yeah. And because of that, and there are going to check we today. need to teach yeah. our three? children biology <laughs> that for a woman, there are three. Yes. And for the man, just the urinary tract and the anal passage. Yeah. So those are things we need to teach early, but you need to master courage. <laughs> yeah, I know Pumla wants to ask a question, but please. Okay, allow me, please. Just give me a second. So I, 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 I feel that you've answered the, a certain general question. I have a problem with parents who their children are getting pleasure out <coughs> of this very early. She's one and a half years old and she's touching herself. Mm. Ma the mom is at her wit's end. <coughs> she, she said, I have beaten the fingers. I have tied the fingers together. I have done everything possible, but the hand will always find its way mm. to that pleasurable place. Should she fear? Should she panic? If she should, what should she do? Because she's in a place now where she doesn't know what to do. The child is even touching other. Beca not because they are not innocent. They are, they are innocent, not that it's evil. So how, how should she do this? I, I think that child will need the support of a child uh, therapist yeah. to unlearn, to, unlearn. To, do, to undo that conditioning. The parent can read about it, but it's take, it takes time. Okay. So it will need time. She needs, the parents need to be kind to themselves. They can start with a therapist, a child psychologist, that gives exercises to do. Mm -hmm. They could read about the exercises as well, uh, find information and do it. I want to encourage them because it takes time. Remember the habit has been forming yeah. and below the radar. Yeah. And so it has formed. Uh, if you've had a child suck, oh yeah, I tried uh, Lovera, I tried those things. <laughs> yes, sometimes they don't work. Yeah. Mm. So, and once they associate it with comfort, yeah. just like the one that sucks with and then a cloth. Yes. Um, or yes, one, I had one who sucked but loved the, the skin touch. So they would lean against my and my uh, arm is it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so they enjoyed that. So you see that connection. Yeah. yeah. But as a ch parent, also you want to win even that behavior yeah. early. Yeah. So once they condition that, like the sucking or the bottle feeding with the touch, mm. then they will need to go through an unlearning. Yeah. Punishment is not going to do it. It's, not, yeah. it's unconditioning, yeah. if I can say that, undoing, and it will take time. It will take systematic exercises, tapes, and being observant, mm. and being kind to yeah. yourself. Yeah. It can be one of the, the, the hardest things to do for your child, mm. but be kind to yourself. Allow yourself time yeah. to undo. Remember, this was done over time. Yeah. And it's easier, the, the positive reinforcement is easier than unlearning. Yeah. Has any of you ever learned a song wrong? Yeah. Uh, lyrics of a song from, eh? yeah. when we're young. Eh? Yeah. You learn it. If yeah. you miss, when you go out. Uh -huh. Bablican, <laughs> number 28, those things. Do you know it takes you longer to unlearn a song when you learn it wrong than oh, it is to really? learn it? Yes, than it is to learn it. Yeah. Yes. So it's the same principle. So that parent, both parents, if they're together, they need the support. They need to work together. They need the support maybe of a professional. And then uh, handle work their child. Yes, work through it. Backwards. Okay, so I'm let's going back to the age-appropriate conversations. Yes. I'd like to maybe speak for you to speak to the parent of the older child, a little bit older. And I like yes. the fact that you have been through this. You have older children, yes. even adults for yes. for children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what would you speak? So there's an age over eight, maybe, and now it's earlier. Before maybe at our times it would be like twelve or so, but now it's tends to be starting earlier where children are now speak they're having crushes mm -hmm. and they're having conversations about boyfriends mm -hmm. and girlfriends mm -hmm. and maybe even you know kissing tie up my touching. boyfriend touching mm -hmm. and you know like that okay maybe at that age it's 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 light 
but it's still it's now yeah. being 15, introduced. I think there is a place of fifteen. There is some go fifteen good chunk there. There, yeah. So that where that still... people uh, they even start engaging, but they're hiding it. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is the first time they're real actually understanding uh, what penetration what is. This really is. What it really yeah. is. So how yeah. do you speak to that? How does that parent go about the dynamic of having yes. those conversations and dealing with that? With the whole crush. Mm -hmm. Without that whole without uh, that anxiety, panicking. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The beginning point, again, is dealing with your anxiety. Yeah. And yeah. dealing with your worst fears and having the conversations about the fears. I listened to you guys, and the older generation of parents always used fear. Yes, yeah. they now, don't laugh at them. Before you laugh at them, <laughs> when it happens to you, your panic button usually is pressed. It's true. And you just run to look for the quickest fix. Let me tell them pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, then, yeah. Remember, you have more than one child. It might work for one, oh, and, and it might work exactly. for the other. We are laughing now, but that moment no, why are you saying is that? very, very... And I let's laugh now. So, <laughs> managing self. Yes. Go to your room, breathe. If you have anything that has triggered, actually, maybe you found a cannot. Because sometimes yes. there are things that trigger us. Yes. Remember that teachable moments are intentional. Mm -hmm. If somebody is becoming a teenager, you tell them, by the way, I like the fact that you want to tell your children about a stage before they get to it. Mm. So sometimes you tell them about a crush. I used that method. And the person is uh, hey, phased out. What? Okay, crash is not yet not clear. clear. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. I then I introduced crash again. I remember S1. Mm. And the person was like, they can't believe they will feel that thing. Mm. They are thinking they are invincible. No, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. fall. Yeah. <laughs> Whether they uh, can't fall. Yeah, it's feeling like I can't fall for that. Yeah. Sure, yeah. how will I feel? Yeah. And I'm like, my dear, we need to talk about this thing, demystify. Yeah. So the key thing is, Explain to your child what a crush is. Yeah. It's a normal stage of development. Yeah. Not everyone gets it, mm -hmm. and not everyone gets it as early, yeah. but you're likely to get it. Mm -hmm. But what has compounded today's crush, I will tell you that today's crush is different from our area yes. because of the exposure. Porsche. Most of us then were not exposed to pornography, mm -hmm. so yeah. we are not quick to experiment. Yes. We felt that with things but didn't act on them. Mm, yeah. That's true. You see what I that's mean? That's true. But now there is a lot of exposure, so the times are a bit different. Yeah. There are X-rated movies. There are all kinds of things that are going to feed the child's libido. <laughs> yeah. Usually the crush, really, those feelings are an indication that you're normal. I usually yeah. tell them. Your, your secondary characteristics have kicked in, biology. Yeah. Yeah. Your hormones are flowing in. Yeah. You're actually normal, you're attracted mm. to the opposite sex. Yeah. You see a beautiful girl, you see a hunk. Some of us didn't see hunks, but people <laughs> see hunks. I was one of those, I, I, I never saw good looking. People had to first tell me, I'd say, okay, uh, eh, maybe. maybe. But <laughs> some people, you know, wow. will see that and they'll feel that guy. Remember, people can have a crush on a movie star. Yes. 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 Somebody they'll never meet. Yes. Yes. They can have a crush on Ronaldo. Yes. So, a crush is a crush. Yeah, Hormones are pouring in, but they are being compounded with what our children are listening to, sensual music, yeah. what our children are watching. watching. Now, that's what makes the crush complex today. Mm. Remember, again, even at 13, the brain does not process love and relationships and affection yeah, and the give and take true, yeah, and the true. complementarity mm. that us ha we have now. Now, yeah. if we are struggling at this age with Already relationships, as it is. many adults are struggling with the dynamics of relationships. What do you think about a 12-year-old, an 8-year-old? So they don't know the complexities of that, but their body. Now, is that is their body. So first affirm that. Yeah. Your body is telling you you're normal. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Let's celebrate that. Mm. Oh, that's You're powerful. normal, you're healthy, you yeah. amazing. If you didn't, yeah. we would uh -huh. be taking you to hospital. Absolutely. You'd be sure. sick. <laughs> and in this era of all the other things of gay and what, if uh, it's a boy and a girl, you, with our, you some of our yeah. values, you're like, okay, first it's a <laughs> boy You celebrate it. Yes, <laughs> it's a girl. Wow, yes. wonderful. <laughs> but <laughs> now you also have to trade the other, if the attraction is same sex. It's a very delicate one, it's a difficult one to have, and remember, uh, our children are being groomed by material. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I think I heard people talk about they're spicing it. Mm. 
Yeah. That is called systematic desensitization. Okay. We are systemi all of us, even adults, we are systematically desensitized. I want you to think about the things that repulsed you five years ago mm. and how you look at them today. You don't do them, yeah. but they no longer yeah. startle you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, that is called powerful. systematic desensitization. Just know that our children are being systematically desensitized mm -hmm. in the area of sex sexuality. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I work in uh, children coming out of prostitution is what we call grooming. Your child can be groomed for sexual exploitation. <laughs> wow. So all these things, it's a, it's a whole thing. You can have somebody in your house that is literally grooming your child. So by the time they get to the crush, it's no longer the other secondary characteristics yeah. are just pouring in. It has so many other complexities. Because yeah. people ask me, how can a child be in prostitution? It's a different story. It's not for today. Yeah. But uh, we are talking about a crush. So as a parent, after you master your courage, you have values. None of us here is parenting outside their values. Yeah, so bring values about relationship to your child. Yeah. Bring them. Yeah. When you feel these things about somebody, yeah. what does it mean to be in a relationship at age eight? How many boyfriends or girlfriends do you want to have by the time you walk down the aisle? <laughs> you started that for I do counseling in a secondary school, so I have done this for the past 11 years. I volunteer okay. counseling. So I see age 13 to 20, uh, to A-levels. Yeah. And so we have these conversations. The, the, the boys, I, I, I like all the boys in the group. So this one I've been with and this one. Now the third one has come. Mm. I feel like accepting. Let's have the conversation. When one day you walk down the aisle and your classmates are with you, how many do you want to have seen your nakedness? So we just create the scenarios. True. It's even Just scenarios because they help paint the picture. Yeah. Now this is for a teenager. Because one of the most notorious ages is 14. They are invisible. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. You are all fashioned. <laughs> yeah. Do you get what Don't I mean? Me so yeah. everything you're saying is yeah. bouncing off their thinking, she's so old-fashioned, so old she's so yeah. not cool. Yeah. But one of the things I've learned, that information is like seeds, yeah. plant them. Yeah. Plant yeah. them, they'll sprout. Yeah. When your child lies on their bed, they'll have something to feed from. Yeah. If your child is empty, they have nothing to use. Oh, wow, that's powerful. They have no raw material. That's powerful. So, yeah. Parents, don't be afraid of your children. Mm -hmm. Some of us are too yeah. afraid. They'll get annoyed. They can get annoyed and drag their slippers. They can oh, bang they the doors. Yeah. All they want, deposit. Yes. Yeah. Powerful. Deposit, yeah. deposit your values. That is so powerful. And it takes me to the last question. Yes. Now they are ready for dating. Yep. <laughs> how does our <laughs> parents, <laughs> now they are ready. 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 ready, before we were gambling, now they are ready. How does a parent prepare their child for the dating world? For <laughs> I leave the crush bit. Oh, okay. I can't talk about a crush without talking your to your child about heartbreak. Heartbreak. Uh, oh, yes. Because not all crushes will end That's well. Yes. Yes. There will be tears. Yes. And one of the things, do not negate your child's emotions. Mm. Even if you want to laugh, mm. you even know that a thing was going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> Please be serious in their tears. Wow. They are speaking to Pumla. They are speaking to Pumla. Yeah. Be present in that because at Take that moment in their lives, yeah. the life, the world has ended. Yeah. Yes. Be the supportive parent who goes back to your room and laugh and follow okay, your baby. Okay. That Come back you. and support the emotion because to them it's very real. It is, yes. Dating. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine week. I also yeah. have adult children. Those are our greatest fears. Yeah. I heard you ladies talk about <laughs> hyenas. I have sons. They are not hyenas. <laughs> so, I hope so. So, I like the fact that you've gone back to raising. You know, I've told people, these speeches of Mbaga mm. at weddings, mm. we should give them, please parents, don't kill me. Yeah. But they are not the most impactful. We prepare our children for dating by modeling. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Let me tell you something. Everything we say, Sorry. as you're raising your eight-year-old in your relationships, yes. whether your husband and wife together, whether you're a single parent, remember you're modeling dating. Yes. Yeah. Just remember that. And I'll never forget, we went to school with this girl. 
the way she loved marriage, I just kept on thinking, we were in psychology class with her, I just kept on thinking, these parents must have done something right. Yeah. We were, uh, b by that time, we were older students, and so we were with younger students who straight from senior six. But the way she loved relationships and marriage and envision these things, I just felt something had been modeled right. Yeah. So the way we model, uh, the honesty, the authenticity of our brokenness, because none of us is perfect, yeah. we'll give them uh, info. But also give them some timeless truth about relationships. Yes. Teach your young adults. When your child is going to uni, introduce the ad and say, by the way, this is the time when we met the guys, usually most of us, the dudes that we married. Yes. Uni time. Yes. Yeah, we must. Uh, so you're likely. And tell them one of the truths is that anyone you date, date, drink, drinking tea, they can be a potential one. If you don't like them, please don't go. Yes. Because people ended up sometimes with people they were not. Even all of you, they shocked you. They were like, hey, you gundi banange ne gundi. Why? Because there are factors that govern relationships. Proximity. Yes. Those if things. You don't see them, yes. If you don't see yourself with them, uh, don't uh, even start. Don't even start. Teach them some well, timeless truths, some yeah, principles. I think, I think I'm one of those people because I think I used to tell myself I don't want to marry a certain kind of guy. But then you start to... Because I remember telling myself, I don't marry a Ugandan. But did I date a Ugandan? No, no, Nasty. No, no, no. Now look, I'm here with them. Not just a Ugandan, but a Ugandan. Ugandan. But so also, I hear you now. So but I don't, also, I don't, don't close out opportunity. But what yeah, I'm saying, yeah, if that's you... That's you eh? That yeah. balance, the balance yeah. is delicate yes, and yes, teach yes. them those timeless truths, the principles, the values, uh, the modeling, but yes. also teach them tell-tell signs of abusive relationships. Or yes. bad relationships. Actually yes. start early. Yeah. Relationships that are abusive, that are manipulative. Yeah. When you see manipulation, you know sometimes when they're old and they're making their decisions, you can't say no, they are making the decision, they follow through with it, yeah. you're thinking, I see control, I see manipulation, I see abuse, and also teach them that when you date, you meet just the two of you. But when you marry, it takes the whole family. Many people forget those principles. So teach them those principles, teach them those values, remind them, be the support. Of course, hold back, don't uh, scrutinizing everybody. You, you need to restrain yourself, but guide. The balance is, is very, very, very delicate. There are so many things we can say about yeah, dating, so but we, those are some of the things. I think somebody also mentioned when children are abused, yes. I think one of the things is hold back your fear and assure your child, because also abuse sometimes st stays till adulthood, yes. and so you support, yes. you affirm them, it wasn't their fault, yes. and then bring back that healing, yeah. and then also you can engage a therapist if they wow. need to. Wow, wow, wow. 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 <laughs> and parents of boys, yeah. let's do a good job. No, yeah. Sorry, don't call them hyenas. <laughs> and parents of yeah. girls, yeah. prepare the right raising. girls. Hyenas. <laughs> and parents of girls, prepare the right yes. girls. Yes. Yeah. Wow, empowered wow, wow. girls and empowered and boys. Exactly. Feels like the girls are empowered, the boys are empowered. disempowered, and it's creating conflict in, in marriage. That's so true. Yes. That's so it needs true. to come together. But wow, thank you so much, Anna. That yeah, was yeah. Very, insightful. very insightful. And uh, remember to ask your questions. Yes. Our socials should be there to answer. And remember, we are in the Valentine's week, the week of love. We spoke about love. It should start from when the kids are young. Let's teach them about love. But the place to be to take your loved one this Valentine is Serena Kampala Hotel and yes. Serena Chigo. Yeah. That's the place to be. Until next time, with love from Bamflav.